Hello everyone, Jose Tunuga and Crisis here, and as you can hear from the fact that there's no background music, um, this video is a bit more serious than my usual gameplay videos. So, I've noticed that a lot of people still don't quite know how to uh, set up the engine lifetimes in the engine INI, so I decided to make that this particular video to help those people. So, what are the initial facts? First, Engine lifetime, for those that aren't aware of why this is important, engine lifetime determines how long the engine will last in a session, that be practice, qualifying, or race. It's more important in race because, of course, races are usually one and a half hours long. You need the engine to last. Higher lifetime, of course, denotes a more reliable engine and car in general. In, in game, at least for the player, Engine lifetime only determines if the engine will last uh, the whole race But for the AIs it determines if the AI is gonna have any sort of mechanical issue like if they're gonna have a suspension or electron Well, not electronics, but suspension or brakes or gearbox any sort of issue. That's what engine lifetime determines If you want realistic DNFs in season the engine lifetime parameter must be set accurately So for example in 2005 Renault should be more reliable than the McLaren's were. The McLaren's were breaking down plenty often while the Renault's were pretty indestructible. Same with the say the Ferraris in the early 2000s. So the lifetime average value uh, lifetime ABG that's the actual name of the of the variable defines the average starting value of the engine lifetime. So for example as you can see here if this engine INI has an lifetime average of 36 uh, 3627 english numbers are hard then on average the engine lifetime of the engine will be that value 36727 uh, ignore me 3627 sorry <laughs> while the uh, lifetime variance lifetime bar defines how much the starting value of the engine can deviate from the average so the deviation in this case is 1348 and here's where we run into issues the facts that i intend to disprove today which are still widely believed for some reason is that the lifetime variance directly adjusts the lifetime uh, the the engine lifetime so if you have an engine with an average of 3000 and a variance of 2000 then the max possible value of the engine lifetime will be 5000 and the minimum will be 1000. This in accordance to a method of setting up the average and the variance of setting it the same value so that uh, you can have engines starting at zero lifetime and then you have the NFs on lap one, which is entirely possible and realistic, but it's not that common in F1 Challenge. The other point I intend to disprove is that the engine lifetime um, within the variance they're all equally likely so you are as likely to have an engine with 5000 lifetime as um, you are as likely to have an engine lifetime of 5000 as well as 1000 in this example so you can have 5000 3000 1000 equally as likely so how do i intend to disprove this that's the methodology of this experiment first i set up an engine ini file with known engine lifetime parameters, both average and variance. Then using a program to extract the engine lifetime as soon as the car goes out on track. This is the initial engine lifetime assigned by the game. Uh, a little explanation here, every time you hit the drive button, you spawn into the track and the game randomly assigns a lifetime. That's the value I intend to get. I repeat that step until I get a significant number of data points. Just 10 data points isn't enough. So for this particular experiment, I did it 438 times. That's plenty data points. I think that will give us a solid idea of what we need to do. Then we do data analysis to, opt to the data points we obtained, including graphs to make everything easier to understand. And the reason for the graphs will, will be explained shortly as well. So what do I expect to see? If the accepted theory holds that, uh, if the accepted theory holds, then the minimum and maximum values for the engine lifetime will be the average minus the variance and the maximum will be the average plus the variance and if we decide to see the frequency distribution it should be a flat line because every point is equally likely 
but if what I suspect happens is correct, then the minimum value will be around the average minus three times the variance, and the maximum will be average plus three times the variance, roughly. Not those specific values, but around there. And we should expect to see a normal frequency distribution, also known as a bell curve. So why I don't believe the theory that it's commonly believed right now? First, the name average and variance sounds like they come from a normal or a normal distribution or a bell distribution or a bell curve and so on and so forth. It's something that I've been studying recently in uh, quality control. Um, I'm studying mechanical engineering. One of the things I must know is quality control. And one of the things you must know in quality control is how a normal distribution looks. Uh, secondly, it will be nice to see if the theory that we have that uh, the maximum value is average minus uh, the maximum value is average plus variance and so on. I want to see if that actually holds when you put it to te the test. That uh, and I am a cheat because I've already done this before. If you read the blog, you you know exactly what's coming. So. Here's how 438 engine lifetime data points look on a graph. That is the graph, that is the distribution graph. So, at least in statistical terms, first we have that the engine had, oh yeah, my mouse is here. Here, uh, I hope I said it so that it records the mouse. Anyway, uh, actually, let me do video editing on that. Let me not trust myself. So you can see the lifetime average and lifetime variance I set up on the engine. I could have used different values, but I decided to go on those, which I calculated a while ago. If I put all those data points that I got using Excel and calculate their average and their standard distribution uh, variance, you get this average and this standard distribution, which look very, very, very close to the value set on the engine I and I. You also get this minimum and this maximum, which also it's calculated on the Excel, it's very close to being the average minus three and the average plus three variance, which is exactly what I expected to see. And on the right, you can see the frequency distribution of the data I obtained. In blue, you can see the data itself, and in red, you can see a bell curve. And as you can see, the blue, that is, or obtained frequency distribution looks very, very, very close to the bell curve, which means that F1 Challenge uses a normal distribution to generate the data for the engine lifetime. Why we discover, or the too long didn't read. Um, like I mentioned, lifetime average and lifetime variance are values used for a normal distribution. They are the parameters used to generate a normal distribution. Following the theory behind uh, normal distributions, the maximum value is roughly average plus three variance, while the minimum value is roughly average minus three variance. The theory behind it is a bit more complex than I want to uh, impart in this particular video. You can, I should put some links down there or something, but uh, you're smart, you, you can figure it out on your own, but the, the rundown is that on an average distribution, um, most of the data be, will be between minus three and plus three standard distributions, which is pretty much what we found in this graph. And finally, points closer to the average are far more likely than those away from the average, which is consistent with a normal distribution. Exactly what you see here. The blue points away from the average, which is the, the, the center of the graph, uh, they are less likely, lower percentage than the middle of the graph, closer to the average. Someone did figure this out already. Yes. Um, first, uh, in a real study, you put the antecedents way before this, but that would have been spoilers for my own study, so I, I, I didn't want to spoil all of you. But yeah, this has been known since R Factor is a thing. The R Factor Dynamic HUD, which is an excellent utility, already takes this into account into the engine lifetime graphs. As you can see, there's a green section, which is the section of the graph where the engine will always survive, a light green section where the engine is very likely to survive, an orange section where the engine cool DNF, and the red section where the engine will absolutely give up. Um, the green section is, um, how to put it, using the theory of normal distributions, is outside three standard deviations. The light green is 
uh, between two and three. Orange is between one and, if, if I remember correctly, it's between two and one, and the red is beyond one. So, yeah, that's a point. And the XT add-on for both our Factor and GTR2 does the same thing. You can see in the middle of the, uh, that's the right image, in the middle of the car, there's a percentage. That's the lifetime of the engine, but in percentage form. In the game, it's actually a number in seconds. But in percentage form, that will change depending on how much the engine is consumed and this value can start not at 100% but sometimes as low as 10, 6%, 5% or go higher than that like 150%. That's because the actual lifetime is higher or, or lower than the average lifetime. So you did all this study, what do you recommend? If you want cars that can start with an engine lifetime of zero or close to zero and therefore DNF on lap one, you should set the lifetime variance to the average divided by three. And to complement this, you do not want the variance to ever exceed average divided by three. I will explain the reason for that in a moment. And this study doesn't only apply to F1 Challenge, it applies to our factor GTR1, GTR2, Race, Race 07, uh, NASCAR Thunder 2003, 2004, uh, probably, I'm not sure if there's a NASCAR Thunder 2002 for PC or if it was made on IC Motor, but if it was, it applies to it as well. Um, I'm not sure if it worked on R Factor 2, I'm not sure if they moved on to a different system, but if they use the same, if there is a lifetime average and lifetime variance value, um, then it will work the same way. I don't have either of those, so I cannot confirm this. And something I have to do myself is that the brakes have a similar set of values. They have an average and a variance. I need to check if they follow the same theory of normal distributions. But hold on a second. You know how, uh, how people usually tell you that you should use like um, the same average and the same variance. As we know from here, this will generate at times a negative lifetime. So, how does the game handle this? Um, IC Motor isn't stupid. It knows what it's doing. It knows that a negative lifetime variance, a uh, li negative lifetime, sorry, should only occur when the engine DNFs. But at the start of a session, no. It should not assign that. So when that does happen, the game outright identifies that it's trying to assign a negative lifetime, and it just gives you a the lifetime average value that's assigned on the I and I. It just says, instead of giving you this negative, I'm just gonna give you the average and deal with someone else. So you never run into a negative lifetime unless the engine actually DNFs. And that's all I have for you for today, at least for this particular episode of, um, this is not an F1 challenge experiment. This is just a regular video. That's, that's, that's all I have for you. If you want to see the Excel I use, it's down there in the description. I upload it on, uh, I guess it's Google Drive, but it's actually like Google Sheets, I suppose. I hope Google Sheets can handle graphs because I originally made the thing on Excel. I hope it does work. Anyway, hope hope this helps someone else out there that trying to create their own mod and trying to set up the lifetime variables the way people usually do in F1 Challenge, which um, that's not the way it works. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the future.